dialing 16 numbers to talk to someone. You realize it's like 2 a.m. in Paris. Sure, but you're the one sleeping with the shades open to a fully lit Eiffel Tower in Parisian music playing at full volume. So I'm pretty sure your forced geographical establishing cues contradict your desire to get a good night's sleep. You and I were in this Dixieland van. I believe those are just called land bands now, Jeremy. Well, this is just poor road constructioning right here. They have completely destroyed this road in a way that makes it unpassable and yet have stationed the barriers directly at the site instead of the turnoff that leads to the road. And then they put traffic cones so that all these people that need to turn around to get out of here can't even move. There will be no escape. Also, how and why did they leave this sidewalk intact while clearly digging up both sides of it? Also, also, why isn't Scooter Couple here just taking the sidewalk out of this mess immediately? How did Candace know her mother had arrived? Seconds ago, mom was stuck in traffic, so it's not like she was expected. Backyard now, please. Why park in the road when you have a driveway? I would have been home sooner, but it took me an hour to drive around the road construction in the neighborhood. An hour? It took you literally 13 seconds to go from here to here. So what exactly are you hiding, Linda Flynn Fletcher? Hey, do you mind? We have a visual gag going on here. I'm not sure how many walls Phineas is breaking here, but him being aware of a forced lower third generic non-promotion is some next level meta. Somehow Phineas and Ferb is turning into the Deadpool of Disney animation, and I'm not sure that's as good of a thing as you think it is. Also, lower thirds. Okay, fine. I guess we should take a sin off for all the fun running gags this show does, like this doofensmirt's evil jingle. So you know what we're gonna do today? We're giving a sin off and hoping a bird doesn't run into it. We're expecting a slight delay for our arrival in Tokyo. Ah, it's always something. Turbulence, headwind, giant jump roping robots. A robot that wasn't mentioned by the pilot, so how would he know that it was hanging from the back of the plane? Also, show seems to be indicating that this robot got caught on this plane while jumping rope. This means that either the plane dipped its altitude to basically ground level, or this robot leaped about 35,000 feet into the air. And now I'm the jerk that has to point out the impossibility of this in a cartoon featuring a giant sentient robot that jumps rope. Also, also, wouldn't that cause the plane to immediately crash? And wouldn't that mean the show is over and I can go back to doing nothing? He says as he dramatically crosses his fingers. I'm also packing this book of puns. Getting your puns from a book. Also, how do you write a pun book and not give it a pun name? What about Punny Side Up or Born to Pun or an all-military pun book called The Puns of Navagrone? Paris, French girls, and Jeremy. Narrating your dreams in your sleep. I'm expecting an alarm to go off because the clock just made a noise, but apparently this clock is designed to beep as the minutes tick on. Who the f*** makes a clock like that? Or who sleeps to a clock that beeps every minute? Stacy? If you're gonna dial a phone number that fast, just use the quick dial feature. Press one button, take a f***ing breath, and ice your sprained button mashing fingers. Also, Stacy answered that phone instantly. She appears to be sleepy, but the moment Candace says her name, she is not only awake, but also sitting up and instantly ready to get on with her day. So you built the Statue of Liberty? No. Oh wow, that is weird. And impossible. It can't be done! There's only 24 hours in a day and that's that! I mean, the delivery could use some work, but sure, Buford would be excellent at TV sins. You see, Buford, if you define the day- And Phineas would be excellent at the TV sins comment section. Yeah, nothing's impossible if you believe you can do it. I'm imagining a child watching this show and thinking, I believe I can get good grades, attend college, feed myself, and keep my place clean while also never leaving the couch because one more round of Fall Guys isn't going to play itself. And now their grades are trash, they're in debt, and still living in their parents' basement, all because Phineas is a bold-faced liar. And now we know why Phineas is so ambivalent to danger, as he has been abandoned by adults on the rear of a bike that is absolutely not designed for tiny babies. You've got to give everyone their bikes back. Mine was the one with the unusually large front wheel. Oh, shit. A sudden appearance of a strange man amidst a group of children who are gathered in a private backyard? Someone can call the police. Or not? Phineas, what are you doing? You're putting your entire world view on the line, and for what? Twitter. Clay Aiken? Yeah, I hired a stunt singer. What do you think? I think your Clay Aiken reference is firmly trapped in the year 2003, even though this aired in 2010. I also think you have too much money for a kid. Aren't you a little young to be able to hire an American Idol runner-up for a backyard concert? And if you agree with Buford, that's all it will ever be. Buford challenged Phineas 60 seconds ago, so how would Clay know to sing this line? Is he improvising? This sounds far too rehearsed to be improvised. Given how clean the floor appears to be, we know that it's often swept or mopped. At what point does someone wonder why Perry's bed is stuck in its position on the floor? Or that it flips around thanks to a hole in the floor? 
Kinda weird, though, that he took the time to cut each letter out of a magazine. Except he didn't. Many of these segments have multiple letters, including the entire Urkov section down here. What word is that even from that isn't the word undercover? An alcoholic witches group called the Beer Coven? Even that has another E that could have been used. Wait, is it Super COVID? Is this a message to the future? Also, this four doesn't even appear to be cut out of anything. I can't believe you brought work with you! I can't believe they allow humans on the conveyor belts. Do you know how long I've wanted to ride that thing? I don't know. Something tells me that whoever installed the gutter system on this house may have been tragically inexperienced. So, Belgi, you want to come too? Well, not I one carry on. All right, carry on then. Going along with a kidnapping bully. You're going to Paris? For rants? For rants. Stacy, they're going to Paris, where Jeremy is. You promised your mom you'd keep your brothers out of trouble. Missing Jeremy so much that you don't care who you might hurt. If you prick me, do I not bleed? Sorry, what were we talking about again? Earlier, not Marshall Mathers was taped up in a seated position, but now he's standing. Sure, they may have had time to retape him in a different position, but that's just wasting quality duct tape. Man, Tokyo's a fun town. I have no idea what just happened. Me either, but I'm uncomfortable, and now researching is Phineas and Ferb accidentally racist. They caught her! They caught her! Uh-huh, sure. Still going when she survives this. Vanessa has been launched off the side of a building that looks like this, which looks nothing like this. Even Perry the Platypus is not immune from a please occasionally look the direction you are driving sin. This is the room where we test the stretching. This is the room where we test the bounce. Honestly, by those two lines, I'm still not sure if you're running a rubber factory or a torture palace, so I'm still a bit on edge. Can we borrow one of these? And by borrow, he means take, destroy, and never return. Here's your parachute goggles and oxygen mask. Maybe those goggles would have been a good idea before now, considering the lack of flight protection would leave your eyes to be tiny stones devoid of all moisture. So, how'd it go? Well, there was some more breaking of the laws of physics, a few more they survive this is, and a general continued meta-awareness of the ridiculousness as an attempt to forgive it all. So, I'm gonna say it went sinningly. I wish that we could stay and have some fun, but we gotta keep chasing the sun. But somehow, they are stopping. How else could they keep getting these costumes they clearly didn't pack? I assume this song is only called Bouncing Around the World because bouncing around the vaguely problematic stereotypes was already taken. We're all out of rubber bands, but the good news is we're gonna crash into Paris. How is that good news? Better question, how does he know that? They just knocked into the Atomium in Belgium and Paris is about 200 miles away. How does he know anything will work? Vanessa, you rented a scooter. Uh, yeah, rented. Grand Theft Scooter. It's okay. I speak English. Yes! I speak English! Americans. Rob apparently had his bike stolen and posted this sign in Paris, and this one in China. Imagine being dedicated enough to finding your lost bike to post signs around the entire globe, but still apathetic enough to not even include a phone number. Take a break and smell these flowers and I think it's worth pointing out that both of the main female characters in this episode spent their entire storyline pining for oblivious dudes as if all that matters for women is validation by being part of a romantic relationship. I'm not saying it's sexist, I'm just saying it's extremely sexist. No, he's my dad and I shouldn't blame him for being busy. It's just that he always seems to put his work ahead of me. I just don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. And the third female lead is defined by her daddy issues. So basically the definition of being a woman in this episode is to desperately seek your validation in a man. That's it, I'm getting my tweezers back from Carl. Changing your appearance because of one eyebrow critic. I thought, you know, the two of you, a boy, a girl, alone in the city of love. Good gravy, mother of dragons, there are children watching. Also, it says something about how ridiculous this show is that I actually thought they had decided to go full Looney Tunes and that Isabella would just grow a new head back instead of the craziness happens but it was just someone's imagination cliche. So here's a sin for being ridiculous enough that I would believe this and an extra sin for doing the cliche anyway. Like when you see your teacher at the grocery store weird? Or like when someone you've known for a long time starts wearing a cowboy hat weird? Or when your teacher wears a cowboy hat while riding a bull at the bar weird? I can keep going. We haven't even breached my top 16 and a half weird things list. Look at all the things you've done. Summer belongs to you. Roll some commercials. Jeremy, you said the G word. Wait, I missed it and really don't want to rewind. Was it gorilla? Gastrointestinal? Geriatric? Gross? Grain? Galactic? Gauntlet? Germaphobe? Geode? Gigantic! Gorgonzola? Grotesque. It was gum, wasn't it? You do realize that you're stranded on this island too, right? I don't care. I'm winning. <laughs> Politics. Look, a sponge and a starfish. There's got to be something we can make out of this. With those ingredients, you'd think you might be able to make a different ridiculous animated show. But you'd be missing the key ingredient. Drugs. Lots of drugs. I get a window 
thing. It's it's a paper airplane. Oh no! Road construction. They have dug a massive trench in the middle of a neighborhood, and I think this goes far beyond road construction and lands firmly in the neighborhood planning gone terribly wrong category. What is below ground that far beneath the surface stretching several blocks that demands this type of attention? Also, this trench is so deep that they've hung a porta potty out over the ledge because nobody will care that human waste will spill out of the bottom down into the abyss below. As these kids ride their bikes down this road towards a ramp with a sun setting in the distance, I'm guessing we're about to see an ET homage. If we do, I'm sending it for the predictability. If we don't, I'm sending it for not paying homage to one of the greatest moments in film history. So what I'm saying is that I don't even have to see how this ends to know I'm sending it. And now you know how the sin sausage is made. The sun is shining, there's a lot that you can do. But the sun already set, so... As the show indulges in yet another musical number, this time of the roll commercials variety, I have to ask, how is the entirety of this cast a trumpet prodigy? And how, with no preparation, did they pull this song out of their brass? Why are this person's shoes stuck to the bottom of their feet? I bet they have those old sandals that have morphed to their foot shape and contain years of sweat, and then they stepped in a puddle, and the liquid turned to that strange foot funk goo, and rather than take them off, clean them, and air them out, they just wore them around, and now they are one with their sandals. You came back early! Jeremy saw Candace earlier in the day and grabbed an immediate flight from Paris to the tri-state area and arrived within hours? Minutes? If it was Phineas or Ferb, I'd have to roll my eyes and shrug because the bar has been set and their inexplicable shenanigans are legendary. But a normal average Jeremy Joe? Nope. I'm a sinning. This musical number ends with shots from completely unrelated episodes. And I really would have thought Sinny would have sinned that. Oh, there you are, Sinny. All this time, I've been underneath Paris. There's this proud moment in every content creator's life when their creative offspring head out on their own channel adventures and don't need Papa CinemaSins anymore. Well, f that. Don't you forget where all this started and get your ass back over to CinemaSins before dark, damn kids. And what's more, I bet you can't do it. You bet us? You're f***ing crazy, but I can't turn down free money. You got a bit. Coincidence? I think not! In Paris and surrounded by French girls. I'm no fool, Stacy. I've seen the oil paintings. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Well, say hi to Jeremy for me. Say hi to your mother for me. There's a man out there. I, 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 I don't know what's going on here. Would you please look in the name of... I don't know, Ferb. I know he's my dad and I shouldn't blame him for being busy. And the cats in the cradle and the suit. 